What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Rugged Tyros. My name is Francis and if you don't know what a Tyro is, a Tyro is a beginner, a newbie. And I like to consider myself an expert amateur angler. It is December 11th today and this is opening day for Gull Lake. Now when I keep saying ice fishing opening day or open season for ice fishing, it's specifically for this lake um, a lot of other lakes are usually open, but Gull Lake, Sylvan Lake, these lakes within my area are only open as of today. So this is a great day for me. Before we get started, I want to let you guys know that this video today is brought to you by Connected to the Land. Connected to the Land was created to bring Canadians together during a time of isolation. Connected to the Land has articles and videos on a variety of topics including gardening, recipes, DIYs, hunting, and ice fishing. Don't forget to check out Connected to the Land's podcast to hear how everyday Canadians are connecting to the land. Hey everybody, Randino 2.0, about a week and a couple days before opening day ice fishing Gull Lake. It's a very popular lake, going to uh, go check out some ice thickness, getting uh, prepared for opening day with uh, my buddy Francis from uh, the Rugged Tyros. So let's go for a walk. guys opening day and I'm just about to leave I'm about to meet up with Randy and because of all these COVID rules we have to use separate vehicles we can't use the same shack so we're gonna be social distancing on the ice it is what it is but here we go just headed out to the lake super foggy out like super super foggy on the ice guys so I have my windows open because I like to listen to the sound of the ice to see if it cracks or not because if it cracks from under you kind of want to get it make a quick getaway so we're parking on the ice just by shore though that sound you hear is actually just the snow so we're gonna park here there's Randy so normally it's pretty lit out here but like normally there's like shacks out here and it's pitch black so there's nobody out here crazy in an ideal scenario we'd be driving out with our trucks but the ice is a little too thin so we're walking out so randy and i like fishing different spots so we split up and go our separate ways usually we have landmarks to kind of guide us but today there's no one on the ice but us and pitch black darkness so i've been walking for like five minutes um, trying to figure out where I'm going. I had to bust out my cell phone to kind of tell me where I'm going. Well guys, I'm in my shack. I set up in the dark so I couldn't really record anything, but uh, it's about 6.30 a.m. I'm not exactly sure where I am. Uh, the bite apparently is good around eight o'clock, seven or eight o'clock, so I'm gonna get some lines down. All right guys, I got some lines down and I'm just gonna warm up the shock a bit. I'm gonna turn on my heater and yeah, clean up a little bit cause I kinda got here in a rush. It's cool. 
So not only do we have ice shacks to block the wind and kind of take us away from the elements, but they're also mostly dark inside, so we can see down the hole, especially as daylight creeps in. So at this moment while I'm jigging, I get a text from Randy. He caught a burbot. Nice fish. So I look over to my right, and still nothing. As you can see by the teal color of the ice, that means there's a lot more light out. I love the ambiance of the cold wind. Randy's way over there, and he's already caught something. She's super slick out, so I have my cleats on standby. I'm not 100% sure why I was whispering, but you definitely shouldn't be yelling. <laughs> Come on, man, just take it. I noticed that there was on my fishing camera, a pike kind of hovering around my bait and I was using one of my newer rods. So what happened was when I saw him take the bait, I yanked up to try and set the hook and disaster. So yeah, that one got away. Other than that, the bite's been pretty slow. So we'll wait it out and see what happens. And just as I spoke, It's moments like that that make it all worth it. Whoa, fishy. I think I pooped myself a little bit. So the ice just shifted, like it moved. There was a wave that went through and that's why I had that face just then. I think this is a good time to start talking about ice safety. So I'm going to be talking about ice safety in our next video. So right now I just want to touch on ice thickness. So as you can see, there are cracks on the ice. This is normal. It's actually quite healthy for ice to do this. Here's a chart that I found online that I kind of use as a guideline to let me know if it's safe to go out on the ice or not. Luckily for me, Randy went out last week and physically checked the thickness of the ice. He let me know that we were between six to about 11 inches. Where I am right now, I'm looking at about six to eight inches. And to get true ice thickness, I recommend you go out and physically check it yourself. Drill a hole. And all this really applies if the ice is clear and had a proper freeze. With melting with the heat lately, the ice is never 100% safe. So before we get into why I love ice fishing so much, I'm going to give you a little bit of history. So basically, I grew up around the water. I grew up in the city, but yes, there was water around, so I'm used to fishing. Growing up, I used to go squidding with my dad, and uh, yeah, so I'm no stranger to fishing. <laughs> Another one. So fast forward, when I was a little bit older, I moved to Alberta, Canada. The closest lakes to me were Sylvan Lake and Gull Lake. I was then introduced to ice fishing from a few friends and it was an okay experience. Okay. What's up? I gotta find out where the wind's coming from. Wanna say hi? Hi everybody. 
So Randy moved a bit closer because it's a little windy and his shot kind of collapses a bit. So he's using me as kind of like a windshield. So fast forward a few more years and my buddy Randy, who took me like shore fishing, kind of taught me a bit about how to fish different bodies of water. He introduced me or reintroduced me to ice fishing. Now his style of ice fishing, I could really get into because it was quiet, it was focused, it wasn't just a matter of just dropping a line in, which you could do, but he put effort into how he caught specific species. And so I started learning from him and learning from him. And now here we are. So why do I like ice fishing so much? Is the thrill of the chase. And when you actually land something, my goodness, your adrenaline just goes. Caught one? Yeah, I got a oh. fish on you. Oh. Nice. Nice little jack. You're going back in the hole, buddy, so don't get too excited. All right. That was cool. Anyway, back to my story. Even if it's raining or snowing or the wind's blowing like it is today, it's nice to just sit in your shack. It's pretty serene. It's quiet. So I find ice fishing frustrating at times, but like this guy said, most of the time it's meditation. So now consistently I've been going out every year and just basically just trying to get as much fishing in as I can. Like I can go anywhere on the ice barring it's the right like thickness and yeah, I can walk. I can drive depending on the thickness. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to get out here. You don't need a boat. And and this is one of the easiest and cheapest ways to get out on the water and get fishing. So you won't be seeing me toss this back in the water. This is what they call poor man's lobster, a burbot or eel put. This is some good eating. I'm saving it for later. Well guys, that was fun. Just packing in now because it's getting a bit windy and I don't want to be unloading and and uh, taking stuff down in the middle of the wind. So, yeah. That's where it was. I'm on my way back to the truck. I'm just glad I'm wearing cleats because if I wasn't wearing cleats, I'd be sliding all over the place. So if you guys like that video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe, then that bell icon for more notifications. I'll catch you guys in the next video, and thank you guys for watching.